Hello, good morning. I woke up maybe 10 minutes ago. I already have my AirPod in my ear. I'm listening to Yo Mama. Yes, I am. <laughs> He's so cute. Anyways, I am looking <laughs> crazy. So let's get ready for the day together, shall we? Okay, so before I shower, I brush my hair, which I already did, to get all of the knots out before I wash my hair. So I go through phases where do I brush my teeth in the shower or do I brush them out of the shower? Right now we're out of the shower phase. So I always brush my teeth before I shower. <laughs> All right, shower is completed. And if anyone's wondering, which no one is, I use Tresemme shampoo and conditioner. Love it. Amber and the great mystery of whether she actually showers. Now, I'm not one to gossip. But you know, when you're dealing with someone who, let's say, is on the larger side, there are these assumptions floating around that cleanliness might be a bit like a unicorn, mythical and all. Of course, I'm not the judge here. I'm just the peanut gallery commentator in this soap opera. Or lack thereof. I mean, the community's been abuzz with the rumors, questioning the logistics of Amber fitting into a shower. It's like trying to fit an SUV in a matchbox. Theoretically possible but in reality, it's just a meme waiting to happen. The mental image of that contortionist act makes me think she'd need a personal trainer or a whole yoga class just to navigate around the soap dish. Let's talk about the physics, people. Getting into the shower might be a win, but maneuvering in there. That's a whole different ball game. I can only imagine it's like attempting to teach a giraffe ballet in a walk-in closet. It's tight, awkward, and definitely not graceful. Plus, I suspect a full 360-degree turn in that shower is a mission impossible. No room to even spin around for a rendition of I'm Singing in the Rain. And you know how movies have those steamy shower scenes. Well, let's just say we're not getting a sequel here. Maybe it's for the best. That visual might be as disturbing as watching a bear trying to be a ballerina in a tutu. Just because Amber can somehow fit in that shower doesn't mean the water's reaching all the nooks and crannies that need some TLC. It's like trying to water a garden with a squirt gun, expecting the flowers to bloom. Honestly, I'd give Amber some serious kudos for even attempting this. It's like a hero's journey, facing impossible odds to battle the grime and emerge victorious. But hey, here's the real tea, we've all got our quirks, right? If Amber needs a shower designed by NASA, well, who are we to judge? After all, I once got stuck in a folding chair at a barbecue, so, glass houses and all that. Let's just hope Amber finds her clinging equilibrium, and maybe, just maybe, the next episode won't leave us all contemplating the aerodynamics of a penguin in flight. Hi. So, obviously, she's still wet. I do not brush my hair when my hair is wet. That's a no for me. I just noticed from my experience, it takes out a lot of my hair. I'm also not going to crimp it. I'm not going to straighten it. I'm not going to do anything with it because I've been using heat on it almost daily. Today, she's just going to be all natural. Enter Amber, the unsuspecting hero of a YouTube show where every little daily task turns into a full-blown epic. Now, I've heard the advice about not leaving a towel turban on your head for too long, something about frizz and damage. But let's be real, that advice doesn't apply to Amber. Why? Well, because she emerges from the shower as dry as the Sahara Desert, and I'm not talking about her hair only. I mean, the girl steps out looking like she just did a PowerPoint presentation on water conservation techniques. Now, YouTube's a land of wonder, right? You see people doing the most mundane things and getting more attention than a celebrity sneezing. But hold up a second. Do most YouTubers vlog their entire morning routine? I mean, half the video dedicated to scrubbing the molars and flossing. Don't get me wrong, personal hygiene is crucial, but filming it like it's a National Geographic special on dental hygiene is a whole new level. I get it, it's like a mandatory checkpoint in the content creation handbook, brush teeth, check. But Amber's dental endeavors get more airtime than the last blockbuster movie. We're talking about excavating the plaque in real time here. It's like watching Indiana Jones searching for treasure, but instead of gold, it's just gunk and teeth. And here's the kicker. While the rest of the vlogging world is out there, strutting in the park, hitting the gym, or running marathons, Amber's choices are slightly more restricted. I mean, who needs the great outdoors when you can spend quality time inside, dissecting the mysteries of oral hygiene for the masses? It's a curious phenomenon, really. The mundane turned into the spectacle. Maybe next, we'll witness a gripping saga on how to properly fold socks. I'd tune in for the drama of mismatched pairs. But hey, if Amber's showcasing the dental routine like it's an Olympic event, more power to her. In a world where the mundane becomes the extraordinary, 
Amber's YouTube channel is a reminder that even the most routine tasks deserve a little spotlight. As for the rest of us, well, we'll just keep flossing away. Well, I just walked Twinkie. I got some packages. This is gonna be my first Amazon haul in this apartment, even though um, these, are, these are things that I actually need. So we have a box and a bag. And I also ordered um, some food. I had this Cajun restaurant last night and it was so good. So I was like, girl, I kind of want that again. So, all right. So the first thing I got from Amazon is I have been seeing this. Why do I still have my sunglasses on? I literally forgot. Oh, now she pulls a disappearing act so good even Houdini would be jealous. She's rocking those shades like they're a top secret spy gadget, all while pretending to forget they're perched on her nose. It's like watching a magician who can't help but flash her magic wand to the audience every five seconds. I mean, she probably thinks she looks like a fashion icon, the next Audrey Hepburn. But let's be real, the only thing she's channeling is a lost tourist trying to look inconspicuous. If you're hiding behind sunglasses indoors, chances are, you're not pulling off a fabulous Hollywood look, you're just squinting at your own reflection. And Amber, darling, we see through your charade like it's made of glass. Pretending to forget your sunglasses is about as convincing as a dog pretending it didn't eat your sandwich when it's got mayo all over its snout. Just own it, girl. If you love the sunglasses, just say so. You don't have to pull a Jedi mind trick on your viewers. The unnecessary lie. Ah, that's the piece to resistance. Amber's as committed to it as a toddler caught with their hand in the cookie jar. It's like asking if she'll ever stop binge watching reality TV, and the answer is a resounding no. No, Kay imagine her interview at a truth serum factory. Amber, will you stop the unnecessary lying? And she'd probably shrug and go, no, no, I won't. But hey, it's not just the sunglasses spectacle, it's the whole package. She's doing the full-on copycat routine. I'm waiting for the day she starts imitating her cat's meow. But this time, it's her mom's style, her mom's mannerisms, and her mom's way of talking. Originality. Who needs that when you can be a clone of your own mother, right? And here's the grand finale. Looking at yourself on a screen with sunglasses on doesn't constitute literally forgetting. I mean, do you literally forget you're wearing pants too when you look in a mirror? It's like trying to convince us that fish can ride bicycles. Not happening. Why treat the viewers like they have the IQ of a potato? They're not just a bunch of gullible lemmings, you know. It's a mystery that might never be solved. But hey, if you're ever in doubt about Amber's sunglasses, you can always just ask her, yeah, right. Okay, you guys, so like I said, I had you guys ask me some questions, so let's answer some of them. What's the most difficult part of this move? Honestly, the hardest part for me is the first 20 minutes to like an hour when I first wake up in the morning, especially the first like three minutes of waking up because I'm just hit with this like, wave of just like heartbreak, depression, loneliness, like the worst feelings you can feel. And it's heavy. It's like mourning every single day. Will you weigh yourself on camera anytime soon? Yes, I will because I haven't even weighed myself since you guys saw my last weigh in and I think it's about time. Does going to bingo and the casino feel addictive to you? No, not at all. If I'm being honest, bingo is kind of boring and I could never go to a casino for the rest of my life and totally be fine. So things like gambling for me, I just, it's not an addictive thing for me at all. So we don't have to worry about that. Depression, loneliness, and the latest entry in the drama, the never ending health issues. It's like a one woman Shakespearean play, but instead of Hamlet's soliloquy, it's more like to shower or not to shower. You can almost hear a gentle whisper in the breeze. I can't, I can't find my sympathy bone as she regales us with her daily trials and tribulations. Now, let's dive into the deep and profound world of gambling. Gambling isn't addictive for me, she insists. Well, 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 isn't that the mantra of every would-be poker champion before they're knee-deep in a Vegas casino, living off vending machine snacks and trying to bribe Lady Luck? You see, my friend, nobody wakes up on day one of a new habit screaming, I'm addicted. It's like that one potato chip, you munch, and before you know it, the whole bag's gone. Everything's addictive, from Netflix binges to chasing that last piece of popcorn around the bowl. So, let's face it, if you're hitting the gambling scene, even if just sporadically, there's a high chance it'll sneak up on you like an overzealous squirrel at a picnic. But wait, there's more. Her fans, they're like the ultimate cheer squad. Oh, you showered. I'm so proud of you. Dishes. You, madam, are a domestic deity. You took Twonk for a walk. St. Francis, is that you? It's like a standing ovation for the basics of human existence. And honestly, you'd think she just discovered the cure for the common cold with the way they applaud. The kicker is, this woman's life is a merry-go-round of routine. 
praise for a clean dish. It's like complimenting someone for having two eyes. This is part of the problem, folks. She gets praised for doing what the rest of us label as Tuesday. And that's probably why she feels like she's won the Olympic gold in adulting.